Don't see any hiccups this quarter. Yeah, I know it was a great quarter. Really proud of it. Um, and the 21% year-over-year growth that we showed this quarter, um, some of that to get to your question about what's working is um, we had 10% year-over-year growth in revenue per client. And so that means that clients who are coming into Stitch Fix are buying more things, staying longer, um, having more successful experiences, and that's all great. Um, but we're also seeing a lot of great client growth. And so we saw 17% year-over-year growth on the client side. Um, we see a lot of the marketing diversification efforts that we're working, that we are doing working. We've um, done a lot more in terms of integrated marketing, of really having brand and, um, and kind of performance performance and digital marketing working better together. And so, um, so yeah, we're proud of the results this quarter. You talked more about shop your looks, which is what a lot of people might think is, is breaking the model, right? Not shipping five things that people have never seen before, but if you go onto the app, you can see, you know, things that go together and buy them individually. Um, what is Stitch Fix in a world where you can shop your look? Is your argument we make the shopping experience more efficient through software. So we don't have to carry as much inventory. We can get you what you want with less hassle. Is that what this becomes about? Absolutely. I mean, I think the market opportunity for a more personalized apparel buying experience is enormous. And, um, and the five item fixes that we've historically built most of our business on are a great way to buy things like jeans and blazers and workwear. Um, but there are some categories where people want more choice and people like more of that instant gratification. And so shop your looks. Yes, there's a little element element of it that looks like e-commerce. You can click on something and buy it. But what's really radical about Shop Your Looks is that for any person, we are not showing you tens of thousands of items. You are not searching and culling and filtering. We're showing you like 30 or 40 things and, um, and you are converting off of that. And so it's a very radically different e-commerce experience. Does this let you become more of a gifting platform next holiday season? Because if you know what my wife has got from Stitch Fix and what goes with it and what her size is. Doesn't it make it easier for me to just log on and buy her something that goes with what she's already got? Because in the past, you haven't really participated in the season in the it's way that true, most retailers do. we haven't. Do. I love the product idea. Um, right now, honestly, we're very early in this, um, this set of innovations. We only, even Shop Your Looks is only rolled out currently to 30% of our women's clients. And so we have a lot of work to do to really optimize the feature and to roll it out to our whole client base. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely opens the door to all kinds of other ways to think about our business this model, including things like gifting. The exclusive brands, which are the private label products for the company, how profitable are those versus selling uh, other, other labels and, and other brands products and how much of the breakdown are they in terms of what customers are buying? Yeah, so we've shared in the past that um, that exclusive brands represents more than 20% in our women's offering and it's actually more than that in our men's offering and it's important in kids as well. Um, on a gross margin basis, um, our exclusive brands do tend to have higher gross margins than our, our market branded products, um, but it's not necessarily for the reason that you would expect. It is partly because of um, kind of the the ability to, to you know to have a markup and to not um, and to have a little bit of a higher margin in the in the initial part but the bigger reason is actually selling through the product and so when we are buying product for our exclusive brands we are often buying things that we have high confidence are going to work they're products that are going to sell through they're going to sell through quickly and so that's really what drives a lot of that margin favorability um, but because our model is a full price model because we are using data to buy the product um, the distinction the difference between kind of branded product and not branded product is not as great as you might see in a department store model as an example. How are you walking investors through? You said we have a lot of work to do on Shop Your Looks. I mean, when people ask about whether 2020 is an investment year, quote unquote, versus reassuring them on margins. What, what is that? What cycle are we in regarding investment? Yeah, it's a great question. We're, we are doing a lot of big investing. I mean, we opened up the UK and kids last year, and so we're annualizing that investment. Those are still investment markets for us, and so we have that. And we're investing a lot in technology and data science. And so we um, have a lot of stock-based compensation. That is um, how you can see the investment that we're making in the team, and that's really against the product, against how do we take Shop Your Looks and make that, um, make that fully integrated into our experience, roll it out to everybody. Um, and so there's a lot of investments we're making, but at the same time, we are showing leverage. We're showing great gross margin leverage. Um, we're showing leverage um, in our core business. And so, um, you know, our business has always been one of profitable growth. We generated 20 million of free cash flow. Um, we are, we've been profitable for a long time, since 2014. And we've been really proud that we've been, been able to use that profitability to fuel our growth. 
a couple of major leadership changes you announced. Uh, your CFO is leaving. You're looking for a new one. Also, a new president coming in from Bain. And I believe you said that she's going to focus on some of these newer initiatives, including Shop Your Look. What does that signal about how big you expect the non-fix segment of the business to be in three to five years? I mean, it, would it be outside of your expectations if most of the business is not five items in a box and it's people shopping individually? Yeah, I mean, we're thrilled to have Elizabeth join. I think Elizabeth is going to be um, the type of leadership that is going to be great for our future, that's going to set us up for the future, and um, and to really answer questions like this. And so what we've seen with Shop Your Looks and um, is that it's super exciting. People love it. It's a great feature. It's additive to the business. And, um, and the realization about our business is when we're thinking about helping people to buy apparel in a more personalized way to help them find things that are um, the best for them, that there's actually a variety of different ways that we can help people to do that while leveraging our skill set and our toolkit. And so, um, so really the charter is how do we figure out how all these things engage? Fixes are going to be a great core part of our business, but there's also going to be other ways that people can benefit from personalization in the way that they buy. Um, and so we're really thrilled to be able to have her leadership joining the team and, um, and really excited to, you know, to share more around this strategy as we develop it. Are you going to need either physical retail or people in physical locations, maybe in major cities at some point, uh, to maybe increase the onboarding of people onto the platform. I can imagine, you know, that there are people who don't exactly know their size, and that might be a place where they abandon. Is that something that you rule out because of your model or something that's possible? It's not ruled out, but we don't have any plans in the near future to do that now. Have you been impressed by any legacy retailer? We, you know, this past quarter, we've been talking about how some have managed to unlock e-commerce, figure out a way to avoid being Amazon. Are there some whom you've been struck by? I mean, um, overall, I have a lot of respect for what legacy retail is trying to do. Like, it is not an easy job to be trying to push and innovate and also to be trying to consolidate your store footprint and dealing with that side of the house. And so I honestly, you know, I think there's a lot of people that I've been impressed with in navigating through that change. Um, on the apparel side, like Target has done such a great job with apparel. And so, um, you know, that's been a source of kind of excitement and inspiration. And it's cool to see that they've been able to use that to drive traffic. Um, but, you know, it's I think it's... It's a, a time of great transformation in retail right now, and we're really excited to, with the positioning that we have, um, and feel like we're really lucky that you know our our path is differentiated and clear. So, what are they fundamentally getting wrong then? You, you hired a couple people from Old Navy and Gap, I believe, in the merchandising did, area. Yeah. So, I mean, they must not be getting that wrong if you're if you're <laughs> hiring folks from them. So, what is the problem? I mean, Gap's not growing. Um, you know, L Brands not growing, Macy's isn't growing, Nordstrom, you know, on the top line isn't growing. Why do you think that is? I mean, it's really about just reacting to the consumer, how he and she wants to shop today, and where he and she wants to shop. And so, you know, for us, we we're flexible. Where we can be, um, you can shop with us online, you can shop with us in the app, you can shop with us now in a variety of ways, the fixes and in a more personalized shop your looks kind of way. Um, and I think the world wants a more personalized offering. I think the days of retail saying like this is the it thing and everybody should go buy it those days are gone and today people want to be treated like unique individuals and they want to be respected for their preferences and i think our model is really well suited to deliver against that